DNU till 10 a.m. And we're presented by Progressive Insurance. And join now by Lewis Riddick, ESPN NFL front office insider. So, Lewis, clean, though. Clean, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Key and I were just discussing uh, what Sean McCoy had to say about Eric Bieniemy, mm-hmm. and and you know I was talking about how I think there is a fear if Bieniemy doesn't succeed. Oh, there's some negative racial stereotype that hasn't been disproven, and and Key was talking about the fact that the pipeline to offensive coordinator, which is now the quickest coach path to a head coaching job, is that you used to play quarterback, a position mm-hmm. from which black players were excluded mm-hmm. for years to the point where Warren Moon had to leave the NFL because they told him to be a receiver, even though he's mm-hmm. the best quarterback in the country, right? Yep. So that's what we're up to here yeah. as you join the conversation. <laughs> what do you think about what LaShawn McCoy had to say? Look, that's uh, – like I was just talking with you guys before we came on there. That's extremely disappointing that he took that route with it. It sounded personal. It sounded like someone who had, although he was trying to put it as, look, I'm just being honest because I have firsthand experience and I was there and I'm just trying to give it to you straight and be objective. No, it sounded personal. And look, I know everybody in that organization from top to bottom. I know how it ended for Shady in Kansas City. I know what they thought about his skill set and his level when, once they shipped him down the road and he was only there for that one season. I know that Eric Bieniemy is not – look, Eric Bieniemy is one of those guys who coaches the way we used to be coached mm-hmm. in the 90s, early 2000s, which is not the way you can coach players now and or discipline or teach any kid now. Which is to say what? How? He's very old school, very much so matter of fact. Sometimes it's going to be maybe some word choices that, I don't know, you don't hear very much so nowadays, but I used to hear all the time. HR, they hurt okay. your feelings type yeah, stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And that and you know what? And there's some people who say, well, there's no there's no need for that in today's world. Well, you know what? Maybe there isn't. But at the same time, it's not necessarily wrong either. And sometimes that's for me, that was one of the things that did resonate with me when I was being coached. Nevertheless, let's just put it this way. It didn't work. It, it wasn't it wasn't a very comfortable relationship between those two. And it wasn't a comfortable relationship between Shady and Kansas City when it ended there because they basically told him, you're not that good anymore. You're not the same guy as you were in Buffalo and in Philadelphia when we drafted you. Players don't like that. Yeah. They don't like being told that. Lewis, I want to read now the, the quote from thing- I want to read the quote from LaShawn so yeah. people know what we're talking about. LaShawn McCoy former running back, and including a year under Biennemi, said the following. I hope he, meaning Biennemi, doesn't fail, but I think he will. He said this on Fox's Speak for Yourself. What's his value? What makes him a good offensive coordinator? He went on to say, McCoy did about Biennemi, he has nothing to do with the passing game at all. The plays are designed. That's Andy Reid. When you're talking about offensive coordinators, I can tell you what makes Brian Dable with the Giants a very good head coach. I can tell you what Andy Reid or Doug Peterson. But when I ask about Eric Biennemi, what makes him good? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what the people in Kansas City tell me makes him good. He's a guy who holds people accountable. He does have a very good grasp of their offense structurally, philosophically, and what they're trying to get done. And he has told me personally he is involved in every facet of their game planning in every situation, and that he presents that to the team, stands up in front of the offensive team and presents that. He is very active in his input during the game as far as situationally what they think are the best plays for those particular situations and has come up with many suggestions that have, re- that have resulted in them scoring big touchdowns in key situations. As far as his leadership ability and his ability to hold people count- accountable in a day and age where I think that is something that is quite honestly lacking, he will do that. He, if you want a guy who you expect to really just kind of reward you for just participating, he's not your guy. If you want a guy who, when you earn it, he's going to give it to you, and then he's going to still hold you accountable, he's your guy. Tell me Washington doesn't need exactly that, that football team. That's a, You know what? As great as Andy is, and Andy is a first ballot Hall of Famer, Andy is an offensive whiz. I've been around him, too, for a long time. Been around Matt Nagy, been around Doug Peterson, Brett Veach, all those guys who have gone through that place and or are still at that place. And I can tell you this. They, to a man, the people who I trust, say that this guy will be a fantastic head coach when given the opportunity. But you better understand this. You're going to get a certain brand and a certain style of coaching that maybe some people don't necessarily like as far as being very brash up front in your face honest about how he feels you need to conduct your business. If you want someone who's going to sugarcoat everything for you and kind of pat you on the rear end and give you a participation trophy, go somewhere else. This isn't your guy. And, and that's the problem, Max, is, is as uh, Lewis was just talking about, 
when you think about Andy Reid, Andy Reid probably calls 70% of the plays, you know, and, and that's okay. That's nothing. There's right. nothing wrong with that. Right. That, that's who he is. Yep. I would never, ever give up play calling if that's how I got my job. Mm-hmm. That's how he got the Eagles job. He was a play caller. So you never relinquish that. Sean Payton isn't going to relinquish play calling duties in Denver, even though he hires somebody and gives them the title as offensive coordinator. Just like he said, there's input. Mm-hmm. He, he suggests, hey, what do you have for me on third down? What do you think of this? That's a working relationship. As it relates to him being a, a head coach in this day and era, in style, the NFL needs that, though. Mm-hmm. The, because there's so much phony baloney with these coaches that's there. They smile in your face, stab you in the back, tell you one thing, lie to you, out there scouring the internet looking for other players instead of just being truthful with you. Players will run through a wall for you if they know that you're real. They know Andy Reid is real. That's why they're having so much success. In Kansas City, when you look at it, Mike Tomlin, success in Pittsburgh, because they already know. They don't have to worry about Mike T lying to him and playing games. Mm -hmm. And this will be Eric Bieniemy when he gets the opportunity. You know what that comes down to, Key? I mean, that's a great point. Look, there's many different ways to skin a cat as far as coach, right? I've had the coaches who are much more pat you on the rear end, positive reinforcement, don't yell, don't raise their voice. I've also been coached by Belichick and Saban at the same damn time, which I will tell you what. A little different. Had me, like, laying awake at night. How do you still have your ears? Bro, let me tell you, I never slept when I played in Cleveland because I didn't want the next day to come too quickly because I knew that, (laughs) to be honest with you, I I mean, it it was just going to be hell on wheels every day with this thing. The thumb was on you every day in terms of how he held you accountable and the kind of things they would say. Yeah. But you know what? The two of the greats of all time, respectively, college and pro. That being said, look, it comes down to three things to me for coaching. And leaders overall anyway. Are you credible? Can you be trusted? Are you competent? Are you good at your job? Yes. And are are you positively impacting people? To me, I don't care if you're black, white, man, woman, yeller, screamer, quiet. If you can do those three things for me as a leader, I'm going to follow you. Everything else is just window I'm a, dressing. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to follow. Everything else is just going to be subjective saying, well, you know what? I don't like when people yell at me. But it I don't is, like when but people. But the racial that's component what it is. comes in because a guy like Joe Judge, who tries to project certainly that same kind of mentality, old school, yeah. da, 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 he gets a job. He's not even a coordinator and gets a head coaching job in well, a no, major no, not, market. But that's not true, though, Max. He was a coordinator. He was a special teams coordinator. Okay, fine, but they moved the uh, hey, uh, Lewis. Yeah. You hey, Lewis. Yeah, they See, moved the goalpost yeah. when they hired you know him. Now yeah. I just want you to be honest. But, but I want right. you. The, that, the point, is, the point is, the point is, just to knock it down for the enemy one at a time. It's not like those kind of personalities don't get jobs. The enemy doesn't get a job. The working relationship with Andy Reid that's a plus. Well, he's not calling all the plays. He's only call, but you have a working relationship right. with a great right. head coach. You're studying Zach under, Taylor, under a, a great head coach. Look, like, Zach Taylor didn't call plays with the Rams. And he got a head coaching Look, two, job. Two guys. And had, and had some time to fail, and too. And Matt LaFleur, Tennessee offense was yeah. two guys, dog. Two guys who I consider very good friends in this profession. Doug Peterson, Matt Nagy. Very good friends. Could call them right now. They'll pick up the phone. Mm-hmm. Got jobs after working for Andy Reid yeah. and not being the primary play call. That, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Exactly. Unless you're Eric Bieniemy. Exactly. Yeah. Most yeah. times people go, well, you worked under Andy Reid, certified first ballot Hall of Famer, offensive whiz. You probably learned a lot. You've learned. A- and Andy doesn't just tell you, doesn't just teach you X's and O's. He teaches how to set up an organization. Yeah. Like you would, I would want to draw as many people from that organization as possible, right? Isn't that the way but it usually for, works? But, but for Eric, it's he doesn't interview well. He does it's just Yeah, like, all them dudes that get I mean, fired interview great. He needs to change his name to Eric Befriend. They and all we'll get they, fired, though. He, not, look, he I'll don't be the enemy. I'll tell you this. If, if he's able to turn this offense around in Washington, yes. you will not be able to deny him anything. But there's and that I, fear you that know if what? he doesn't of succeed. Of course. And, you know, oh. and, and Max, you know there's people sitting in the weeds waiting. Of course. They're just waiting like, man, I hope he doesn't. 